What's up guys, it's Mr. Bringle and today we're going to continue working on our acceleration math practice problems and we will be doing numbers 5 and 6 in this video. So let's zoom in here on number 5 and get going. It says that Vivian is walking to the hairdresser at 1.3 meters per second, so that's indicating her current velocity when she glances at her watch and realizes that she is going to be late for her appointment. Vivian gradually quickens her pace. So this phrase right here, quickens her pace, means that she is accelerating, right? She is changing her velocity. And it says at a rate of 0 0.090 meters per second squared. This is where it's really important that you know your units of measurement because you could easily confuse yourself that that is another velocity, maybe her final velocity, um, but this is in meters per second squared, which is the unit of measurement for acceleration. So that is her acceleration, not her final velocity. And then it says, what is Vivian's speed? after 10 seconds. So another indicator that we actually need to find her final velocity um, and that we were given the acceleration. So now that we have all this, let's list what we know. We know her initial velocity here uh, was 1.3 meters per second. Okay. And I'm sorry, I'm going to adjust this here so I can mostly be in the screen. Um, <clears throat> Apologies. And then we know that we are solving for her final velocity. So I'll go ahead and put that in as the question mark. We were given the acceleration value. That is 0 0.09 meter per second squared. And then the time we were given that and that is 10 seconds. So we want to go to our um, ask our questions from our acceleration equation flowchart to figure out which equation we want to use here. The first question is, did this problem give us a number four or ask us to solve for a change in position, delta x or delta y, depending on if it's a horizontal or vertical problem? In this case, no, we were not given a change in position value and we were not asked to solve for change in position. We're asked to solve for speed. So that eliminates equations two and three. We are going to use the first equation here um, and this version of the equation is already set up to solve for final velocity. So final velocity is equal to acceleration multiplied by time plus initial velocity. Um, this is no different than this equation right here. Acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time. Um, remember, change in velocity is final minus initial velocity. And then if you were to rearrange this equation, um, it would come out to look like the one that we have right there. So um, I will go ahead and erase this and let's plug our numbers in. So final velocity is equal to the acceleration, which is 0 0.09 meter per second squared multiplied by 10 seconds. So she's speeding up at that rate over the course of 10 seconds plus her initial velocity. Um, whoops, apologies, I need to actually write that in. And that will give us the velocity that she ends up at. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my calculator just the way that you should. Point zero, don't just write down what I have here. And you should get that her final velocity is equal to 2.2 meters per second. Okay, we will go ahead and move on to number six. In this problem, it says in order to open the clam it catches, a seagull will drop the clam repeatedly onto a hard surface from high in the air until the shell cracks. If a seagull flies to a height of 25 meters, how long will the clam take to fall? So we've got to be careful here. I'm going to kind of circle how long will the clam take to fall because um, sometimes people get confused by the terminology how long thinking like distance, um, but this is asking us for a time. So really the only thing that we know is that the height or the vertical change in position of this clam is going to be 25 meters. And then we know that we are solving for the time that it actually takes for the clam to fall. So I, it's a good assumption that there are some things that I know that haven't been stated. One of those things would be g, the acceleration that is caused by gravity. So that clam is going to accelerate because the force of gravity is acting on it. But that's not what we're writing down here. We're writing down the acceleration that is caused by that force of gravity. So that is going to be 10 meters per second squared 
always for all objects that are in free fall. And then the other thing that we need to list here would be the initial velocity of the clam. Any object that's dropped from, in at least in our problems, is going to be dropped from rest. So we can make the assumption that the clam was not moving vertically. It was zero meter per second initial velocity. And then once the seagull drops the clam, it starts to speed up. So let's go to our flow chart. Uh, did this problem give us a number four or ask us to solve for change in position? Answer there is yes. It gave us the change in position of the clam. It fell 25 meters. So the height here is the same thing as the change in position. Uh, so we will eliminate equation one. We'll move on to our second question. Did this problem give us a number for time or ask us to solve for time? And the answer there is yes. It is asking us to solve for time. So we wanna use equation two, not three. Delta Y is equal to VIT plus one half GT squared. Just remember that the T is the only thing squared over here. Um, and then you multiply it by G and cut it in half. So 25 meters is equal to the initial velocity of the clam was zero. So the, anything times zero, the time multiplied by zero is zero. So we can put zero in there plus Remember, whenever this happens, it really simplifies to delta y is equal to 5t squared because 1 half times g is always 5. But I'm going to go ahead and show the work here. And then we're multiplying by t squared, and that's ultimately what we're solving for. So you can see it simplifies to delta y, 25 meters, equal to 5 meter per second squared times t squared, right? Now the next step here is to go ahead and divide by five meters per second squared on each side. And then we find that five, this would end up being, if we we're keeping track of, of units, if we divide by a meter per second squared here, we'd have to um, use the reciprocal, but the meters are gonna cancel. We're gonna be left with seconds squared, which is correct because this is equal to T squared. We now need to square root both sides of this and we will find that the time is equal to the square root of five, which we better plug into our calculators because that is going to be 2.24. Um, looking at sig figs here, I guess we have two sig figs, so we'll go 2.2 seconds. Um, but if you were to put 2.24 seconds, I'm not going to count you incorrect for that. So this will conclude our video on practice problems numbers five and six for the acceleration math practice problems. Thanks for sticking with me, and I hope you learned something.